that thought is the strength of my life. And whom said I be afraid when the wicked, even my enemy, my enemy, my faith and trust I put all in thee. Put all in thee. Believe you got the world in your hand. World in your hand. You bless me, Lord, I know I can stand. Exodus the 20th chapter, verse 1 through 17. Go ahead. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Let's go into Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. Read verses 13 and 14. Go ahead. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Let's go into Revelation chapter 22. And we're going to read verses 14 and 15. Go ahead. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. So we want to thank God for the reading of the law. How the person Call in and ask me, you should do the law just once a month. I didn't reply. The word, you know, they're doing something like what's some state putting the Ten Commandments in the schools now. And people are whining, talking about <laughs> churches uh, uh, violating the church and state act, you know. I'm going to tell you something. How can the church be, be separate from the state when the same people that make up the church do the state? Ain't nothing wrong with reading the, command reading the commandments, sister and brother. They need to be everywhere. If they were, then we wouldn't have all this stuff that's going on right now. So we're going, so we're going to read the commandments every Sabbath day. Now, I'm going to get into this lesson. This lesson is titled, The Coming of the King of Israel to Proclaim His Kingdom in Peace and Take It by War. Now, I looked at the, I looked at the caption they had, 
up while uh, with this title on it. It had in bold letters, the coming of the king of Israel to proclaim his kingdom in peace. And then a little bit of letters at, at the bottom, to take it by wall. <laughs> to take it by wall is the big letters. You understand? Everybody talking about the peace, but they don't ever tell about the wall. We suffering from that here too? I just want to let them know the caption, let the caption guys go, I don't like that heading. Take it by wall should be the biggest one. Well, this is what's wrong with the world right now, sisters and brothers. They don't know Jesus. They don't know what this guy is going to do to this earth. Because if they did, it'd be so much cleaning up, you wouldn't smell nothing but tides and soap. And that's the problem. People do not know this God that we are called on, that we call on, we're supposed to be called on every week. But we're going to have a look at it because Jesus is, was the king of Israel even when he was on his own name, Jehovah. And when he come, he will be the king of Israel. We fired Jesus. Israel fired Jesus. That we want a king like everybody else got that we can see, that can go out uh, uh, before us. Somebody forgot that they had never lost a war. And all them nations that had a king, they kept losing to the nation that didn't have a flesh and blood king, which was the Lord. So we're going to diagnose this because what we are going to deal with today has not been taught in churches. They do sound bites. But I came to the conclusion a long time ago, sisters and brothers, that the reason the Bible was not taught is because it is our history and the other people didn't figure they have a part in it. But our history includes everybody, sisters and brothers. Because the creator that chose us is the creator of everybody else. And we're going to have churches full of people tomorrow getting a doctrine that have nothing to do with the word of God. They have where the Lord love everybody. You know, his love is unconditionally. <clears throat> well, we're going to see. But the first thing is, never in these churches, I'm talking about even our churches, black churches, you don't hear Jesus referred to as the king of Israel. Why don't you hear that and you're Israel? Because you was taught by the Gentile, then they turned around and taught you that you was a Gentile. So everything you call godly, I hate to say it, 90% of it is wrong. Jesus is the one that told you who's king he is, and he's the one that told you what he's going to do to you. Well, you know, Christ is love. I wonder how much love was it when he drowned the whole world and just saved eight people. Yeah, that was Jesus. You ain't never dealt with the Father. On your own, go to St. John 5 and 37, and it'll tell you, you ain't never seen the Father at any time or heard his voice. So who have you been dealing with? Jesus. First Corinthians, the 10th chapter will tell you that. I want to introduce you and show you what this guy is going to do and who he is. We're going to start this in Matthew, the second chapter. Matthew, chapter 2. Because we're going to read this book to you, sister and brother. Everybody preaching at you, but they don't have nothing to say. Because if you don't read, you don't have nothing to say. That's what we showed you in Pentecost last week, that all the people that the Lord sent, he gave them a book, a roll to read first. Once they had read his book by his role, then he would have said, go out and teach my word. If you have not read the book, what you got to teach? Nothing. Brother said to me, brother, you say, you, sometimes you sound angry. I am angry. I am angry every day. And I'm grieved every day. Because I know what people are doing and I know the consequences of, the, uh, uh, of their behavior. 
I know it. People say, well, I believe, I believe. I'm going to tell you, I know. I read the book. I read what the Lord said in the past, and it came to pass. The Lord pushed me to re, re, uh, uh, write the book, The Four Winds of Heaven, and everything in there is man's, is a Gentile dynasty and the behavior of the nation from there, even down to the European Union. I mean, the Lord didn't miss a step. The Lord said, prove me. I proved it. So we're going to start this in Matthew, the second chapter. We're going to deal with the coming king of Israel. Matthew chapter 2, Matthew chapter 2, we're going to start at verse 1. Go ahead and read. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, uh -huh. behold, there came wise men from the east of Jerusalem. There came three wise men. There came wise men from the east of Jerusalem. By the way, I want to point out a flaw. He got three wise men. The book don't say it could be two or two thousand. But listen, I'm going to show you what made them wise. Go ahead and read. Saying. Where is he that is born king of the Jews? Where is he that is born king of the Jews? He didn't say my personal savior, did it? No. Or my God in light? Go ahead and read. For we have seen his star in the east, uh -huh. and I come to worship him. Go ahead. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Why was he troubled? Because the Romans had made Herod an Edomite, one that's called a Jew nowadays. They made him king over Judea. And he was troubled because he was a king. Go ahead and read. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. Now, why he could he demand and find out? Because the Edomites know who we are, and they know that we are the priests of the Most High, and they know that we know. So the Edomite, which was a converted Jew, went to Israel, which is a born Jew, and demanded to him, where is the Messiah going to be born? And he knew they were going to tell him because we're supposed to know. We have the arguments of God. We are the answer people, sister and brother. But we won't step forward and take it. We will uh, 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 take the word of a Gentile. Go ahead and read. And they said unto him, in Bethlehem of Judea. And they said unto him, in Bethlehem of Judea, why? For thus it is written by the prophets. For thus it is written by the prophets. Go ahead. And thou, Bethlehem, in uh -huh. the land of Judah, Go ahead. art not the least among the princes of Judah. Go ahead. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people in Israel. For out of thee, O Bethlehem, Judah, shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Because it didn't say rule the Gentiles. But the Hamites, they didn't even tell your story. And your story is there. But what did they do? They said, for it is written by the prophets. So let's go in the prophets and find out. Let's go into Micah, the fifth chapter. Micah chapter 5. Because I'm not going to lie, sisters, but I, I, am, I, I am angry every day. And I'm sad every day. Sometimes my wife asks me too many times, are you mad at me? No, baby, I ain't mad at you. I, I got stuff on my mind every day because I'm looking at what's going on every day. And people take the word of God lightly. You understand? Do what the matter is, I'm mad at this crowd we got. What happened to them? Maybe next time they show up, I'm going to take a picture, and they don't show up next time, they ain't going to give them a biscuit at the next meeting. <laughs> Let's get serious about this thing. Michael chapter 5, because this is what they quoted. Michael chapter 5, we're going to start at verse 1. 5 and 1. Go ahead and read. Now gather thyself in troops, O daughter of troops. Go ahead. Ye have laid siege against us. Uh-huh. They shall smite the judge of Israel with a rod upon the cheek. They shall smite the judge of Israel with a rod upon the cheek. Go ahead and read. But thou, 
Bethlehem, Ephratah, uh -huh. though thou be little among the thousands of Judah. Go ahead. Yeah, out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel. That is to be ruler where? In Israel. Go ahead. Whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. So how long is this guy that's going to be king of Israel, how long has he been around? Forever. Hebrews, some chapter tell you he's getting no mother, no father, no beginning of life, or end of days. Forever. I see all the time, Jesus didn't come out of Mary. He came through Mary. Big difference. So he is to be ruler in Israel, sisters and brothers. And let's go and look at the first time that Mary was told about Jesus. Let's go into Luke, the first chapter. Luke chapter 1. And it grieves me. See, people, you read this Bible to them, but still, well, my pastor see. Well, I was raised uh, this or I was raised uh, that. I don't care where you, I was, I was a boy once upon a time. That mean I'm supposed to be a boy, stay a boy the rest of my life? Nature lets you know nothing stays the same. Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1, and we're going to start at verse 26. Luke 1 and 26. Okay, read it. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee. Go ahead. Named Nazareth. Uh-huh. To a virgin spouse to a man whose name was Joseph. Go ahead. Of the house of David. Now the Lord sent an uh, uh, angel because he had a, a message for Mary. And what he said, go ahead and read. And the virgin's name was Mary. Uh-huh. Now let's look at this message. Skip down to verse 30. Verse 30 and go ahead. And the angel said unto her, uh -huh. Fear not, Mary, Go ahead. for thou hast found favor with God. Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Go ahead and read. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb uh -huh. and bring forth a son. Thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son. And shall call his name Jesus. And call his name Jesus. Everybody kick against Jesus. First time, I can always tell when people run into some of the other Hebrew Israelite class, well, you know, they come back, well, you know, I, I want to look into that name, Jesus. I said, look, the Lord told us in Isaiah, the 28th chapter, with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to his people. Why? Because he knew that his people were going to be scattered into every nation under the sun, and whatever nation they find themselves in, they're going to speak that language. So you're going to give me a name that you got from somewhere else. Right. To replace a name that I got out of here. I'm going to roll with this. I speak English. What else did you say about him? Go ahead and read. He shall be great. Uh huh. And shall be called the son of the highest. He's going to be called the son of the highest, which is God. Go ahead and read. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And the Lord God shall give up to him the throne of his father David. Have David ever gone to heaven? I can read you. In Acts, that he still haven't gone to heaven. He ain't never ruled in heaven. Therefore, he can't have a throne in heaven. So where do you have to go to sit on David's throne? Where David's rule, which is in Jerusalem, sisters and brothers. How is it that all the New Testament Christians that don't read nothing of the New Testament don't see this? Maybe he ain't no Testament Christian at all. Are you going to tell me about Christianity? How are you going to tell me about Christianity? I am the original Christian. When the disciples was called Christian in Antioch, there was not one non-Israelite in the church. Y'all hear me? Because they weren't teaching is nobody but Israelite. Even when Peter taught the first Gentile, he went in and told them, so don't you know it's unlawful for a Jew to come in of any other nation and, and, and sit with them? And when he get back, when he went back, them other apostles wanted to whoop him. They argued with him. Peter had to explain that the Lord is the one that did this. And that was way down the line after he had been called Christian. So you gonna tell me about Christianity? You don't have a clue. I know about it because I gave it to you. You didn't give it to me. That's why I know it's messed up. 
So so the Lord told Mary, you can have a son. I want you to call him Jesus. And the Lord God is going to give him the throne of his father David. And he's going to rule over the house of Jacob forever. Jacob is Israel. That is our father's name, sister. But the angel didn't tell her something that was, that, that, something that was not already written. Let's go into Isaiah, the ninth chapter, and pursue it. All these things are written, sisters and brothers, but don't nobody read it. Isaiah chapter 9. A lot of times, you know, I see people talking, call themselves talking about the word of God. I don't even jump in it no more. I just walk away. Because sometimes people are so dumb, you can't even, they can't even ask to read the book question. They're hung up on false religion. Isaiah chapter 9, Isaiah chapter 9, and we're going to start reading at verse 6. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6, because they're saying, you know, how can, how can a, a, a man be God? Well, you don't have a clue, do you? Verse 6, go ahead. For unto us a child is born. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Unto us a son is given. Go ahead. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And he shall rapture you off to heaven. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. Just wanted to make sure that's what it said. Go ahead and read. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Uh-huh. Counselor. Go ahead. The mighty God. Go ahead. The everlasting Father. Uh-huh. The Prince of Peace. That means he ain't Isaiah's son, is he? No, sir. All these titles. Wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. Well, you mean he's the father to get, get these people that run around and go teach them but one with three personalities, the father in the creation, the son in redemption, and Holy Ghost in the church. He is the father of Israel. He adopted Israel. He have one that's called his father which a role they took on when they decide that they had to come down and deal with this man. But being that both of them are eternal, and we showed where he says going forth has been from old, uh, from old to everlasting, and Hebrews tell you, you ain't got no father or mother, then that lets you know this is beyond flesh and blood, sister and brother. Go ahead and read. Verse 7. Of, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Go ahead. Upon the throne of David. Upon whose throne? Upon the throne of David. Didn't the angel tell uh, uh, Mary he was going to sit on it? Yes. Go ahead. And upon his kingdom uh -huh. to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. So the now, this God is the king of Israel. This is Jesus. Always been. But he didn't come in his own name. He told you he come in his father's name. Every time they define what he is or who he is, it always comes down to the king of Israel. Let's go into Matthew, the 21st chapter. Matthew chapter 21. We're just showing you all of this has been looked over. Now, you've been in somebody's church all your life, and I know you haven't heard none of this stuff. You're going to make God something. The one that created you, you're going to make him what you wanted to be. That don't fly. Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21. And we're going to start reading that in verse 5. Uh, uh, first, I'm sorry, verse 1. Matthew 21 and verse 1. Matthew 21 and verse 1. Okay, read it. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and would come to Bethpage unto the Mount of Olives, they sent Jesus two disciples. They uh, sent Jesus two disciples. Now, when they come to Mount Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples. Why Mount Olives? Because that's the last place his feet touched on this earth, and that's the first place his feet going to touch when he come back. So he's just giving you kind of like preview. I'm going to come down on the Mount of Olives, and then when I come in, I'm going to come in Jerusalem. Three and a half years later. He's just giving you how he's doing, but this time he did it in peace because he's a sacrifice, he's a sin offering. Go ahead and read. Saying unto them, 
go into the village over against you, and straightway you shall find an ass tie go ahead. and a coat with her. Go ahead. Loose them and bring them unto me. Go ahead. And if any man say all unto you, you shall say, the Lord have need of them. And straightway he will send them. Then you know now, I'm going to come in on an ass. If anybody say, ask you why you getting this ass, tell them the Lord have need of them. So they're going to let you have it because they had, they knew what, because Israel, a lot of Israelites knew Jesus through prophecy. Go ahead and read. All this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. All this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. Jesus didn't do nothing except the prophet wrote it first. That's why I'm, I look at my Hebrew brothers. How come you didn't recognize this guy? How come you can't recognize you guy? You, this guy, you say you, are, you read the prophecy, you're an Old Testament scholar. How come you didn't recognize this guy? He did that to fulfill the prophet, which was spoken by the prophets. Go ahead and read. Saying, tell ye the daughter of Zion. Tell you the daughter of Zion. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek, and sitting upon an ass, and a coat, the foal of an ass. Behold, thy king cometh unto you. Not your personal savior. Your king cometh unto you, lowly and meek, and riding upon an ass. That that word's your king again, isn't it? Yes. Because he was and will be the king of Israel, and through Israel he's going to rule the whole world, sister and brother. You believe what you want. But he said the prophets wrote this. Let's go into Zechariah, the ninth chapter, and see what the prophet Zechariah wrote. There's nothing new. But the whole thing is, this guy is the king of Israel. Oh, he had given us for a minute because we fired him. And he let you know he was mad. He said, I gave you a king in my anger and I took him away in my wrath. We fired the Lord. And we wonder why has all this Drama and pain falling on us. Even when we were saying crucify, Pilate washed his hand and said, my hand is clean of the blood of this innocent man. You know what your forefather said? Well, let his blood be on us and on our children. You got it. Sometimes it's bad when a child have a stupid father. He get to suffer for it. So he said, a king wrote, thy king, thy king coming. Zechariah 9, and we're going to start reading that verse 9. Zechariah 9 and verse 9. Okay, go ahead. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Uh -huh. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Go ahead. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation. Go ahead. Lowly and riding upon an ass. Uh -huh. And upon a coat, the foal of an ass. So they were supposed to recognize Jesus then, wasn't they? Yes. You said you read the prophecy, then prophecy told you about the guy that you're going to see coming in lowly riding upon an ass. That's your king. But they didn't understand prophecy because they didn't read it. Therefore, that's why they killed it. Right. Because if they understood prophecy, then somebody else would have killed him, but not them. And look what your king said he is going to do. Go ahead and read. And I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim. I'm going to cut off the chariot from Ephraim. And the horse from Jerusalem. And the horse from Jerusalem, go ahead. And the battle boat shall be cut off. Go ahead. He shall speak peace unto the heathen. He's going to speak peace unto the nation. And his dominion shall be from sea even to sea and from the river even to the ends of the earth. And his dominion, that means he's going to dominate this entire planet. Every inch of it, sister and brother, from sea to sea. That's when he come. The second time. But he had to come, but he couldn't do it then, sisters and brothers, is because he had some work to do. He had to become a sin offering because we was locked under a death sentence by Adam and Eve. So why are you going to come save a dead man? But I'm going to show you. He was sent to deliver us, sisters and brothers. 
We're going to get back here sooner or later, but let's go into Isaiah, the 61st chapter, and look at it. Isaiah 61. That's why, sisters and brothers, I don't, I don't grieve for brothers and sisters that's died in this word. I grieve for the ones that wasn't in the word. Because they died right, and they better off than we are. I hate to say that. People don't, well, brother, boy, how you know they better off? Because they died right. And they're going to be raised from the dead. And if you ain't right, they can end up passing judgment on you. Isaiah 61, we're going to start at verse 1. Isaiah 61 and verse 1. Because we're going to show you how this thing is going to take place. Right now we're talking about the meekness of Jesus, how it's going to come. 61 and 1. Go ahead. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me uh -huh. because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. Go ahead. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Go ahead. To proclaim liberty to the captives uh -huh. and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Now he said, the Lord have anointed him. The spirit of the Lord is upon him. That's talking about his word, sisters and brothers. And he sent him to do all of this. But let's go, let's keep reading because he sent him to do a lot of stuff. Go ahead. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord uh -huh. and the day of vengeance of our God. He's supposed to tell you about that. So you're supposed to teach that in the churches too. That, that's the acceptable the year that the Lord's going to come and his vengeance. But nobody teach about the vengeance. Go ahead. To comfort all that mourn. And to comfort all that mourn. Go ahead. To appoint to them that mourn in Zion. To give unto them beauty for ashes. Go ahead. The oil of joy for mourning. Go ahead. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Go ahead. That they might be called trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. He came to do all of that. But we rebelled for him, sisters and brothers. This should have been in the beginning. But now he's telling you this is going to happen in the end. Go ahead and read. And they shall build the old wastes. And they're going to build the old waste places. See, what's over there now don't belong to us. They done tore all ours down. We go back, we're going to build an old waste place. Go ahead and read. They shall, they shall raise up the former desolations. Uh -huh. And they shall repair the waste cities. Go ahead. The desolations of many generations. I mean, a whole lot of generations. Because the last time we inhabited that was in 70 AD. Go ahead and read. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. And you're going to get to hire somebody else. And strangers are going to. Stand and feed your flocks. If you come out the south, you know what that means, don't you? Especially in my day, they had sharecroppers. Well, somebody's going to have to share a crop to you. But you're going to be the top person. Go ahead and read. And the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. Go ahead. But you shall be named the priest of the Lord. And you shall be named the priest of the Lord. Go ahead and read. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. Uh huh. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. Don't nobody call you the priest of the Lord now, do they? All they try every time they associate you is always with violence and shooting and stealing. But nobody call you the priest of the Lord because don't nobody know who you are. Go ahead and read. For your shame you shall have double. Go ahead. And for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Go ahead. Therefore in their land they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. That's what's going to happen with us. Now skip down to verse 9 and go ahead. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles. Don't nobody know who you are now. You don't know who you are. You used to be a Negro. Then you just became uh, 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 Afro-American. Then you just went black. Now you're African-American. Who are you? But the Lord said, when it's time, you shall be known among the Gentiles and everybody else. Go ahead and read. And their offspring among the people. Uh huh. All that see them shall acknowledge them. All that see them shall acknowledge them. That they are the seed which the Lord have blessed. That they are the seeds which the Lord have blessed. Not this white guy that calls himself a Jew. You know what the book say about him? He called him the people that the Lord have indignation. 
forever for judgment. They're going to know who you are now. But then that is what the Lord Jesus was sent to fulfill. So let's see how much ever did he fulfill. Let's go into Luke, the fourth chapter. Because we read a lot of stuff here, don't, didn't we? Yes. Be back in the land, build old ways places. We're going to have servants. We're going to have people dressing our fields and doing all these good things for us. And we're going to be called the priest of the Lord. That's a whole lot of stuff. That the one that the, that the one that the Spirit of the Lord was up on to accomplish. A whole lot of stuff. So we got to see. Did he do this? Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. Luke chapter 4 and verse 1. Okay, read it. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Because the Lord took Jesus uh, and, 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 and let Satan try him too. So you can't say later on, see, we, see Adam and Eve was tried, but, and we've been tried, but not Jesus, no, no. Jesus went and got tried too. So when his trial was over with, he started his ministry. Skip down to verse 14. Verse 14 and go ahead. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. Go ahead. And there went out a fame of him throughout the, all the region round about. Uh-huh. And he told in their synagogues, being glorified of all. So Jesus came and he was famous about him because you're famous when you're saying something. And he taught in their synagogues and everybody glorified him. Go ahead and read. And he came to Nazareth uh -huh. where he had been brought up. Go ahead. And as his custom was. And as his custom was. He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He went into the synagogue on Sunday. Sabbath day. That's still the seventh day of the week which is called Saturday. He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and did something real weird. Read this. And stood up for to read. And stood up for to read. <laughs> Go and see how much reading you're going to see done in the church tomorrow. But go ahead and read what it, and what happened. Go ahead. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And what happened? Go ahead. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Go ahead. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Go ahead. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Uh -huh. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Go ahead. To preach deliverance to the captives. Go ahead. And the covenant of sight to the blind. Uh -huh. To set at liberty them that are bruised. Isn't that what we just got through read? Yes. Go ahead. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Go ahead. And he closed the book. Wait a minute. You ain't through. Did he close the book? Go ahead. And he gave it again to the minister. And he sent it, gave it back to the minister. Go ahead. And sat down. Uh-huh. And the eyes of all of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. So they watching him. Prophet thinking, how come he don't keep reading? What did he say? Go ahead and read. And he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. All of a sudden, that changed the whole dynamic. That lets you know that he going to fulfill it all. But there's a part that he had, had to fulfill first. He had become the sin offering, sister and brother. Yes. All this stuff about him rebuilding Jerusalem and bringing the people back and all that, sisters and brothers. He going to do it all. But he wasn't supposed to do it at his first coming. Because oh, he had a little chore he had to do. He had to become a sin offering. He had to die for our sin first. So let's go back to Zechariah, the ninth chapter. Because he had some people that he had to let out of the prison. Nineteen. And we, ninth chapter, rather, and we're going to read one verse, verse 11, 9 and 11. Remember, he said before in verse 10, he's going to uh, uh, have dominion from 
sea to sea, from the river even to the end of the earth. But something he had to do first. Verse 11. Go ahead and read. As for thee also. Uh, as for thee also. By the blood of thy covenant. Go ahead. I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein was no water. By the blood of thy covenant. I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein there was no water. How did he do that, sister and brother? By becoming a sin offering. In other words, he had to allow himself to be killed for the sin of the people. Being that he was God and he couldn't die, he needed a body to take over so he could die. So let's go into Hebrews, the 10th chapter, and pursue this because Jesus was a sin offering. And the only way that he could get us out of this pit where there was no water, in other words, get us, get us out from under this eternal death sentence, he had to become a sin offering and die for our sins, sister and brother. Otherwise, it would never have happened. Hebrews, the 10th chapter, because the wages of sin is death, has always been. That's why when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, God had to make them clothes of skin. What do you think he got the, got the skin off, off of? He had to kill some poor animal before anything had died. Hebrews chapter 10. And we're going to learn some things. The only way to learn it, something, sister and brother, is because uh, God, the ways of sin is death, and anybody that commits sin had to die or something would die for them. In order for God to keep from killing this old creation, he replaced man with animals. In fact, this animal sacrifice is what is nailed to the cross. But you think that the commandment was nailed to the cross. Why? Because you've been taught by the Gentile. Hebrews 10 and verse 1, read it. For the law having a shadow of good things to come. Uh -huh. And not the very image of the things. Now you hear people quote that. See, the law having it's just a shadow of good things to come, but we're not in it. I said, wait, why don't you read the whole verse before you open your mouth? Finish it. Can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers down too perfect. So that was the law that couldn't make you perfect. The law of animal sacrifice, sisters and brothers, not God's royal law, his commandments. Why couldn't they do that? Skip down to verse 4 and go ahead. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. It is not possible. The Lord said that for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sin. Why? Because the bulls and goats didn't take away sin. It's like a person had a, got them a pet python. And they was got to the house one day, too long, come back, they couldn't find the baby. The python ate the baby. Right. All you sin and snake, the snake didn't sin. He was hungry and he fed himself. Your baby just happened to be in the way, so he was on the menu. Man is the sinner, not the animal. Animals do what they do all the time. This is what we don't understand. You want to find a sinner? Look among man. So the blood of bulls and goats could never remove sin because they didn't ever die. So now, the Lord needed somebody to remove sin. Go ahead and read. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, uh -huh. he saith, sacrifice and offering thou would it's not. Well, you know, sacrifice and offering you didn't want. Go ahead and read. But a body hast thou prepared me. But a body hast thou prepared me. Why did he need a body? Because he had been, had been around from old, from everlasting. You couldn't kill him. You cannot kill God. But being God is all wise, he figured out a way to come and die for your sins. And how did he do that? To become one of you. Since the death sentence has been passed on you. I'm going to become one of you so I can come under this death sentence. Go ahead and read. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. Go ahead. Then said I. Lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me. He said, you haven't had no praise. So he said, look, 
I come in the volume of the book. Yes. It is written to me. Have we not been reading prophecy written about him? That's why I said the Hebrews should have known. Even my brother nowadays, I got some Hebrew brothers that don't know that Jesus was the one that, prophet, that the prophet spoke of. All of them. Even when Moses said, the Lord going to raise up a prophet from among you like unto me. You better hear that prophet. All that don't hear him is going to get cut off. So I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. So what's going to happen with this body? Skip down to verse 10. Verse 10 and read it. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering in the body of Jesus Christ once for all. By the which will. We are sanctified by the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. Animal sacrifice, they kill a whole lot of animals, but it didn't help. Go ahead and read. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices. Go ahead. Which could never take away sin. Which could never take away sin. That's why Jesus had to come and die. That's why he needed a body. Go ahead and read. But this man... After he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, uh -huh. sat down on the right hand of God. Well, go ahead. From his fourth, expecting to his enemies be made his footstool. No, Jesus don't have no enemies. He love everybody. Listen, brother. All I have to say is, woe is man. Is when he get up. Out of that seat at the right hand of the Father. Let's get an idea. Let's go in the 110th chapter of Psalms. Because he said, after he had done that, he sat down at the right hand of the Father, expecting for his enemy to be his footstool. If you expect something, that means that somebody has promised you something. Isn't that correct? That's what he said, expecting his enemy to become his footstool. So now, he was sent by the Father, and the Father told him this, then he expected it. Probably when they were doing it, spitting on him and slapping him all upside the head and talking stupid. Ooh, boy. And he said, I mean, I created this. Okay, it's your day now. So I'm going to see you tomorrow. I know I'm going to see you tomorrow, because if you die, I'm going to wake you up and see you. Psalm 110, Psalm 110, and we're going to start at verse 1. This is why he expected it. Go ahead and read. The Lord said unto my Lord. The Father said unto the Son, that's before they even became the Father and the Son. Yes. That's why David said, the Lord said unto my Lord. Go ahead. Sit down at my right hand uh -huh. until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Sit down at my right hand until I make thine enemy thy footstool. That's why he said in Hebrews, the 10th chapter, after he had died, he sat down at the right hand of the Father, expecting his enemy to, come at, to become his footstool. Why? Because he told him here. Yes. Even before it happened. Go ahead and read. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Uh-huh. Rule down in the midst of thine enemy. Oh, he know he's going to come out of Zion. That's the heavenly Zion. And go to the earthly Zion. And he said, rule thou in the midst of thine enemy. That means he's going to be here ruling, sisters and brothers. Because ain't none of his enemies are going to go to heaven. Because ain't none of his friends going to go to heaven. Ain't nobody going to heaven. The whole theater is going to take place here on this earth, sister and brother. The Lord. Go ahead and read. What verse? Verse 3. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. Go ahead. In the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning. Thou hast the do of thy youth. So your people are going to be willing in the day of your power. And Jesus told Pilate that. We're going to read that later on. Because look what's going to happen. Because in the day of his power, his people are going to be prepared for war. Those are the holy angels and then, then those that are in the first resurrection. Skip down to verse 5. Let's see what he's going to do. Go ahead and read. 
The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. The Lord's going to strike through kings in the day of his wrath. Go ahead and read. He shall judge among the heathen. He's going to judge among the heathen, which are the nations. Go ahead and read. He shall fill the places with the dead bodies. Not sweet Jesus. Yes. He going to do what? He shall fill the places with the dead bodies. Go ahead. He shall wound the heads over many countries. I mean... Jesus is going to kill so many people. Well, we're going to read that later on. That's why I said people don't know who this guy is. You don't know who you're messing with. It's just like you playing with a rattlesnake and think that you're rubbing a millipede. He is going to fill the places with dead bodies. That's why he told Pilate this. Let's go into St. John 18 chapter. But, don't know, but they didn't believe it. Those people don't know, sister and brother. I followed this thing, sister and brother. I have followed it. Over 55 years, I followed it. And I look at this. And the more I understood, the more I was afraid. Then I understood what it said, the wisdom of God. Is the, begin, uh, uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the beginning of knowledge because you find out who you're dealing with. And this guy is not to be messed with. It's all that simple. But they didn't made Jesus so soft until you can't do nothing to make him mad. St. John 18, chapter 18, and we're going to read verse 28. 18 and 28. Okay, go ahead. Then led they Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment. Uh -huh. And it was early. Go and ahead. They, and they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but, they, but that they might eat the Passover. See, Jesus was the Passover. Therefore, he had to be killed on the Passover. Oh, he ate it that night, but he got killed in the daytime of the Passover. People don't understand the evening and the morning makes up a day. And the evening come first. So they didn't want to go in there because they didn't want to defile themselves in the judgment hall because they wanted to be clean for the Passover. Skip down to verse 33 now. Verse 33 and go ahead. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again uh -huh. and called Jesus go ahead. and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Now that's what, art thou the king of the Jews? Now they done heard about it. Right. But the Jews took exception. Go ahead and read. Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, uh -huh. or did others tell it thee of me? He said, look, did you come up with this on your own, or did somebody else tell you this? Go ahead. Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Uh -huh. Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? He said, look, am I a Jew? Your people delivered you to me. I didn't go out and get you. They the one that want to kill you. So look, what have you done? But look what Jesus said. Go ahead and read. Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. Uh -huh. If my kingdom were of this, of this world, then would my servants fight. My kingdom or not is not of this world. Because if this, my kingdom was of this world, then my servant would fight. Nobody paid no attention to that. Finish that. That I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. He said, but my kingdom is not from here. It's not of this world. His kingdom is to come later. But Pilate saw that. From that moment on, he was trying to let Jesus off the hook. Yes. But your father was the one that kept saying, crucify him, crucify him. But Jesus knew that he had to die. His first coming was not to rule, but to die for the sins of the people, sister and brother. But when he came and died for the sins of people, then the whole dynamics changed. Because when he come back, he is going to deal with this creation. That's why he said that, you know, when he said he shall rule from, uh, he has dominion from B from C to C, but later on said that by the blood of thy covenant will I set forth thy prisoners out of the pit where there's no water. He letting you know I had to come die first before I rule this earth from sea to sea. He didn't say from Jupiter to Mars, did he? No, sir. So let's go into Michael, the fifth chapter. 
still want verse 37? Uh, what's it, first what? 37. Read it, go ahead. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Uh-huh. Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. Go ahead, so Pilate wanted to know. Right. So look, man, are you a king? And what did he say again? To this end was I born. To this end was I born. I was born to be king. Yes. Go ahead and read. And for this cause came I into the world, uh -huh. that I should bear witness unto the truth. Go ahead. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. So he said, well, that's why I came in. Because I want to bear witness of the truth. But look, mister, I was born to be a king. Yes. Shook Pilate up. But don't nothing shake Israel up. So let's go in the Micah of the fifth chapter. Because he came to die the first time. That means he will have to give Israel up until a certain period of time. Micah chapter 5. Micah chapter 5. Because the Lord told you, this book is written about him, telling you what he's going to do to you if you don't do what he said. Micah 5 and verse 2. He's going to tell you what he's going to do to this world too, sister and brother. But right now, we are just like a woman in pain trying to bring forth. In other words, we are in trouble, sister and brother. We still are. We just don't know it. Verse 2, go ahead and read. But thou, Bethlehem Ephratah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of these shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel. To let you know, I want to read that again, let you know we're talking about Jesus, the ruler in Israel. Come from Bethlehem. Go ahead and read. Whose goings forth have been from of old, uh -huh. from everlasting. Forever. Go ahead. Therefore will he give them up uh -huh. until the time that she was surveilled of have brought forth. Therefore will he give them up. Who? Israel, his people. He going to give us up until the time that the woman that travailed it like she having a baby have brought forth. Go ahead and read. Then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel. Then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel. In short, sisters and brothers, he is going to bring us back after this woman. What woman is he talking about? Let's go on to 12th chapter of Revelation and look at her. When it's time for her to bring forth. Revelation chapter 12. Because the Lord had a time set for everything. That's why Job told him, give me a set time and remember me. There's a time for everything. It just don't happen willy-nilly. The Lord have it all laid out. And it's going to happen exactly the way he said it. I proved that in the book of the four winds of heaven. Just like he said it. Rome didn't come before Medo-Persia. Rome came where the Lord said Rome was going to come. The Greeks didn't come before Babylon came in the slot that the Lord had put there. So we're going to see who is this woman. So he's going to give them up until it's time for her to bring forth. Verse 1, Revelation 12 and 1. Read it. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun uh -huh. and the moon under her feet. Go ahead. And upon her head a crown of 12 stars. So she was clothed with the sun, the moon on her feet, and she had a crown of 12 stars on her head. Put you a marker here. In fact, you ain't got to put no marker here. We're going we gonna to get, yeah, put a marker here. We're going to go and find out who this woman is. Put you a marker here. And let's go into Genesis, the 37th chapter. We're going to see who this woman is. That lets you know the Lord, <laughs> the Lord have told about everything that's going to happen by his prophets. Everything. There is no secret. If it's a secret, that's because you didn't read this book. So if you don't want your secret revealed, don't let the Lord know about it. Because he's going to tell it. 
Genesis 37, we're going to start at verse 1. Genesis 37 and verse 1. Genesis 37, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. Okay, read it. And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger, uh -huh. in the land of Canaan. Go ahead. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren. And the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and with the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. Uh -huh. And Joseph brought unto his father that evil report. So now this is talking about Jacob here and his son, his 12 sons. And so Joseph's brother didn't like him because his father made a difference in him. Plus, again, too, he always was blowing the whistle on him. But he also was a dreamer. Skip down to verse 5. Verse 5 and read it. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. Everything he did, his brothers hated him more and more because of his father's behavior, and he was a snitch. Skip down to verse 9. Verse 9, and go ahead. And he dreamed yet another dream, uh -huh. and told it his brethren. Go ahead. And said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. Go ahead. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obedience to me. Now look at it, he said, I dreamed another dream. He said, Behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obedience to me. Obedience to me. So what the sun represent? That represents Jacob. Who was the moon? Represent his wife. And who was the 11 stars? The 12 brothers of Joseph. Go ahead and read. And he told his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, was it, was it this dream that thou hast dreamed? Go ahead. What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Uh -huh. Shall I uh -huh. and thy mother uh -huh. and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? Shall I? So now we know who that woman is. The woman is talking about Israel. Jacob is represented, the moon represents Jacob. I mean, the sun represents Jacob. The moon represents his wife. And the 11 stars represent Joseph, 11 brothers, so when you add Joseph to it, then it's 12 stars, ain't it? So now we know, according to prophecy, who this woman is in the 12th chapter of Revelation. Now let's go back to her then. Go back to Revelation, the 12th chapter. You should have a marker there. So it's good to know who you're dealing with. So now we're going to Read verse 2, and let's see what happened with this woman. Go ahead and read. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. She was travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. But I'm going to show you the first child she got. Skip down to verse 5 and go ahead. And she brought forth a man child. And she brought forth a man child. Who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Who was to take everybody to heaven. Who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Rapture him off the earth. Who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Oh, so he was to rule all nations with the rod of iron. Yes. Not steal you off the earth. Go ahead and read. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And her child. Now where is Jesus now? Didn't the Lord say Sit at my right hand. So he sat at the Father's right hand, waiting for his enemy to become his footstool, sisters and brothers. So how no, why is there nobody ever read this about Jesus? And so this woman is still in travail. We are still in pain, sisters and brothers. And the Lord said in Michael, he's going to give them up until she who prevail bring forth. Who is that? Israel. And then he said he's going to return his brethren back to Israel. But we still prevailing. Well, Brother Boone, we ain't prevailing. We got the best of everything. Boy, you need to look around at yourself. And don't you know they're still selling you in the Sudan? The Ishmaelites, which are Arabs, still selling you? Our children killing one another in the streets. Everybody else killing us. If we are not in pain like a woman, then who 
is, sisters and brothers? Who is? Because we are struggling. Let's go into Isaiah, the 26th chapter. We are struggling. And our struggle ain't getting no better because some of them we still spitting on the Lord. Israel hate his Lord and King. Isaiah 26. Because sometimes, because you don't have no understanding, you don't understand that you are still struggling. You're just like a woman trying to deliver a baby. We are in pain as a people. Isaiah 26, and we're going to start reading at verse 15. Isaiah 26 and verse 15. Okay, go ahead. Thou has increased the nation. Ooh, he sure have, because can't nobody out-baby us. We'd have had more babies than any people. Go ahead and read. O oh Lord, thou has increased the nation. Uh -huh. Thou art glorified. Thou has removed it far into all the ends of the earth. We in, ain't we in every, every nation under, under heaven? Go ahead and read. Lord, in trouble have they visited thee. Uh-huh. They poured out a prayer when thy chastening was upon them. Who's chastising? Lord. With his chastising upon them. That's why people come, well, we're talking about we want reparation. The Lord didn't bring us here to give us reparation. He brought us here to punish us, sister and brother. That's why everybody's getting whatever they want, and you getting the short end of the stick. And don't have a sense enough to know it. Go ahead and read. Like as a woman with child that draws near to the time of her delivery uh -huh. is in pain and cries out in her pains. We, that's where we are. Go ahead and read. So have we been in thy sight, O Lord. That's where we are. Are people in pain, sisters and brothers? Go ahead and read. We have been with child. Uh huh. We have been in pain. Go ahead. We have as it were brought forth wind. Uh huh. We have not wrought any deliverance in the earth. Uh huh. Neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen. So the status quo is maintaining. They're talking about Juneteenth. Juneteenth. It took us two years to find out that they had lifted child slavery up off us. Two years. And then they went into another. It's just like sharecropper. It wasn't nothing. My daddy was a sharecropper. You understand? And at the end of the year, because he had had a few sicknesses himself, and this, at the end of the year, he was in debt with the one that owned the plantation. You know why? Because, you know, you got this medical deal here, and you had to get groceries here. My old man said, so I'll tell you what. He took his two children it is me, and he left. Because you work a whole year and they figure out how to swindle you out of whatever you had coming. How's the share cropping? At the end of the year, they take it all. That ain't sharing it with you. And it's still the same, sisters and brother. So we have been with child. What verse was that? That was the end of verse 18. So we have been with child. We have been in pain. We have, as it were, Brought forth the wind. Finish that. We have not wrote any deliverance in the earth. Neither have the inhabitants of the earth fallen. Why did he say that? Because the Lord had told you in prophecy to we ain't going to get no deliverance until he took this earth down. So we're struggling. That's why I said he's going to give us up until the time when she which prevail it, bring forth. In short, to the time when, it's, when Israel is supposed to be recovered out of this captivity. And you in captivity. But you ain't gonna go for that. I tell everybody, to them, man, ain't, in, ain't nobody captive. I said, drive your car without a license. Don't pay the taxes on your house that you don't owe a dime on. Right. Go to the lake and fish in God's lake and catch God fish without a license and see what happened at the game ward and get you. Whip your child and they're going to drop DCFS on your head. You ain't in captivity. You can't raise your own children. They won't let you discipline them. So they grow up like a wild weed. Then they get to put them in jail and employ some of their people. Or shoot you in the head. 
We are in pain, sisters and brothers. And the Lord said he's going to let us stay there and it's till it's time for that woman, which is Israel. Ain't that correct? We proved that with the book, didn't we? Until it's time for her to deliver. In other words, time for us to be delivered. Now let's go back to Micah, the fourth chapter, and pursue this. Do you getting, you getting the straight up word of God, sisters and brothers. We don't get off on all that spookery stuff. God ain't no spookery God. He's a revealing God. He wants you to know what's going on. And he wrote it to you, but you won't believe it. Now look at my Hebrew brothers. And the more we find out by who we are, the more wicked it looks like we get. Insult people. Want to abuse our own women. Had to tell a person in Washington Park years ago he was a Muslim. He ain't had always saying something ugly about a woman. I said, man, don't you have a mother? You got a sister? Yeah. And you got a mother? Yeah. Something wrong with them? Well, I don't like the way these women move. They need to. I said, look, you are going to victimize the victim. She's a victim with you, mister. She's going to bring the drummer down. The Gentiles and, and the nation going to bring the drummer down on your woman. Then you're going to pile up on, with them on your woman and abuse her. We don't think, sisters and brothers. We are still travailing like a woman that's trying to make birth. I don't know, but some women have told me that is real pain. Micah 8, 4 and verse 8. Micah 4, and we're going to start reading at verse 8. Go ahead and read. And thou, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion. Go ahead. Unto thee shall it come. Uh -huh. Even the first dominion. Go ahead. The kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. So the Lord is going to set up the kingdom in Jerusalem. And then he's going to bring everybody back. Jerusalem first, though. Go ahead and read. Now why dost thou cry out aloud? Go ahead. Is there no king in thee? Well, that's talking in the future. It will be one, but go ahead and read. Is thy council of Paris? Go ahead. For pains have taken thee as a woman in travail. He said, that's what happened. You're in pain now because you wouldn't listen. I brought this up on you. Go ahead and read. Be in pain. Be in pain. And labor to bring forth, uh -huh. O daughter of Zion. Go ahead. Like a woman in travail. Uh -huh. For now shalt thou go forth out of the city. Now you're going to go forth out of the city. And thou shalt do well in the field. Uh -huh. And thou shalt go even to Babylon. Uh, you're going to go even to Babylon. Who took Judah out, sisters and brothers? Babylon. Go ahead and read. There, there shall thou be delivered. Uh -huh. There the Lord shall redeem thee from the hand of thine enemy. He said to Babylon, you're going to be delivered. And from Babylon, your God is going to redeem you. What do you think the European Union other name is called? Mystery, Babylon the Great. You don't even know because you don't read. And when Babylon the Great come and exist, sister and brother, the Lord called them ten toes in Daniel the second chapter. And the Lord said, in the days of these ten kings shall the Lord of heaven set up a kingdom. Jesus is going to take them out. Yes. Along with Russia and everybody else. But he specified them. That's why I know, even at my age, I expect to see this thing come to an end. I don't have no playtime, sister and brother. So he said, you're going to deliver it. You're going to be delivered to Babylon, and from Babylon, I am going to redeem you. And when you come to redeem you, you're going to find out why. The Lord had it written, the nation haven't fallen. Because ain't nobody going to give you up without a fight. Let's go into Isaiah, the 66th chapter. Isaiah chapter 66. Because the Lord is going to let you know what he's going to do. This is this Jesus that everybody made a powder puff out of. Isaiah 66, and we're going to start reading at verse 5. Isaiah 66 and verse 5. Okay, read it. Hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word. Uh -huh. The brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake. He said, hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word. Your brethren that cast you out, hated you, 
for my name said the Lord. Yeah, in thy name say, who is your brother that hated you? And is wearing your name right now. Esau, the one that they called you. Go ahead and read. Say it. Let the Lord be glorified. And he's saying, let the Lord be glorified. And everybody's giving him the glory over there. Go ahead and read. But he shall appear to your joy. But he's going to appear unto, appear unto your joy, Israel. Go ahead and read. And they shall be ashamed. And they're going to be ashamed because he's going to take them out. That's why I don't have to dislike them. God already decided what he's going to do. Go ahead and read. Because what happened to us would come from the hand of the Lord. Go ahead and read. A voice of noise from the city, a voice from the temple, a voice of the Lord that rendereth recompense to his enemies. Yeah, it's going to be real noisy. Go ahead and read. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man child. Now it's back to the woman now. Before she brought forth, she travailed. And she brought forth a man child, but this man child is not speaking about Jesus, but then this man child is talking about the rest of the people too. Go ahead and read. Who have heard such a thing? Who have heard such a thing? Who have seen such things? Go ahead. So the earth be made to so the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Oh, we're talking about the earth, aren't we? Right. Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Go ahead and read. Or shall a nation be born at once? Shall a nation be born at once? All of a sudden, you got the nation of Israel. Finish that. For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Oh, so who of her children? Every one of you and every other Israelite all over the planet. You're already a nation, sisters and brothers. But the Lord is going to bring you forth. It's going to be like almost like a, 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 a windstorm. Boom, all of a sudden a nation is going to be born in one day. That's what day is that? That's the day of the Lord. Because that's when he's going to bring Israel back. Skip down to verse 13. Verse 13 and go ahead. As one whom his mother confideth, uh -huh. so will I comfort you. Go ahead. And he shall be confident in Jerusalem. Uh -huh. And when he see this, your heart shall rejoice. Go ahead. And your bones shall flourish like an herb. Uh -huh. And the hand of the Lord shall be known toward his servants and his indignation toward his enemies. So you're going to rejoice when that time comes. Because this servant going to know who they're dealing with and his enemies going to know who he is too. Go ahead and read. For behold, the Lord will come with fire uh -huh. and with his chariots like a whirlwind. Go ahead. To render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. Go ahead. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. He ain't coming kissing nobody, is he? No. What Lord is this? Why don't we go and find out? Let's go into 2 Thessalonians, the first chapter. And maybe Jesus won't be so sweet to some people. 2 Thessalonians, the first chapter. Because you need to know about this guy, because he got some real drummer lined up for this earth. And if you're in the wrong place, you're going to be in trouble. First Thess Second Thessalonians, the first chapter, and we're going to start at verse 6. 1 and 6. Go ahead and read. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Now, he's telling me to repay them for the tribulation that they brought on you. It's righteous for him to bring it on them. Y'all see, you see what the Lord is saying? Whatever these people did to us, I'm going to do it to them. Go ahead and read. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. Uh -huh. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. When the Lord who? Jesus. Oh, go ahead and read. Shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. Uh -huh. In flame and fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. Go ahead. And that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Now, ain't that something? Because he's going to come. Jesus is going to come in flame and fire, taking vengeance on them that don't know God or him. I will not obey. Don't look like Jesus is so soft, do it? Mm -mm. Sisters and brothers, even the prophet Habakkuk saw the coming of Jesus. And it frightened him to death. Let me show you what I'm talking about. He saw what we're reading about, what we just read about in Isaiah. Let's go into Habakkuk, 
the third chapter. Because when Abaka saw this thing, <laughs> it put some fear in him. That's why I know people don't, ain't heard about God because they don't know about fear. But you will fear him if you know what he's doing and you know what he's going to do. Abaka chapter 3. Abaka chapter 3. Gonna start at verse one, three and one. Okay, go ahead. A prayer of Abaca, the prophet unto Shigarnoth. Uh huh. O oh Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. He said, Lord, I've heard you. I, I heard what you said you were gonna do. Yes. And I was afraid. I was scared. Go ahead and read. O oh Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. Uh huh. In the midst of the years, make known in wrath. Remember mercy. O oh Lord, please in your wrath, deliver, remember mercy. For the Abaca was shown this thing. Just like John was shown was in the, on, in, on, uh, uh, in the spirit on the Lord's day. Habakkuk was too. Go ahead and read. God came from T-Man. That's, that's uh, Edom because he come from there because he's going to do some killing. Other scripture back it up. But we don't, that's in another lesson. Go ahead. And the Holy One from Mount Paran. And that's Ishmael. He's going to deal with him too. That's the one that's fighting over there. Ishmael and Edom. And y'all taking sides. Oh, they should have did that to the Jews. They got to come. Oh, the Jews shouldn't have did that to the poor Palestine. Both of them enslaved you. Both of them messed over you. Especially Ishmael, he used to castrate your son and had him a real eunuch slave trade going. And they're still dealing with you in the Sudan. Y'all didn't know that? That's your people, the Sudanese over there. I remember years ago, a news people jumped Farrakhan. He jumped in the air, my brother, blah, 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 blah. And he went and showed him and, and, and played something they had where the Arabs are still abusing blacks and selling them. Farrakhan couldn't open his mouth. You're going to have your Muslim brothers. He done did you in too. Ain't nobody innocent. 83rd chapter of Psalm tells you that they all conspired together to cut Israel, to cut us off that the name of Israel be no more remembered. You know who he had at the top? Esau, father of the Jews, Ishmael, the father of the Arabs. But we don't know nothing. So we're embracing always people that we should not embrace. It's just like kissing a cobra. Start back from the top of that verse. Go ahead and read. God came from T-Man. And the Holy One from Mount Paran, uh -huh. Selah, his glory covered the heavens, and the earth was full of his praise. Go ahead. And his brightness was as the light. Uh -huh. He had horns coming out of his hand, uh -huh. and that was the hiding of his power. That's a metaphor. You know, like horns coming out of his hand. Horns supposed to be represent power. Go ahead and read. Before him went the pestilence, and burning coals went forth at his feet. Didn't he say it going to come and burn and fire? We read that. Yes. In Isaiah and also in Thessalonians. Go ahead and read. He stood and measured the earth. He stood and measured the earth. He beheld and drove asunder the nations. And he, he looked and he drove asunder the nations. Go ahead and read. And the everlasting mountains were scattered. The perpetual hills did bow. His ways are everlasting. He's going to take them down, sisters and brothers. Skip down to verse 11 and go ahead. The sun and the moon stood still in their habitation. Didn't we, don't we know that the sun's going to turn uh, uh, black and the moon going to turn red and the stars going to fall before the Lord come? This is talking about the same time. Go ahead and read. They stood still in their habitation. Go ahead. At the light of thine arrows they went. Go ahead. And at the shining of thy glittering spear, thou didst march through the land in indignation. Thou did march through the land. That's talking about the earth and the nations. Indignation. Go ahead and read. Thou didst stress the heathen in anger. And he going to trash the heathen in anger. That means he going to do a lot of damage, ain't he? This is the Lord, sisters and brothers, but don't nobody read about this because they're telling you how sweet he is. He going to trash the heathen in, in anger. Now skip down to verse 16 and let's see what this really going to be. Verse 16. Read it. When I heard, my belly trembled. When I heard, my belly trembled. My lips quivered at the voice. 
My lips quivered at your voice. Go ahead and read. Rotten this enemy into my bones. Boy, he saw some bad stuff, didn't he? Go ahead and read. And I trembled in myself. Go ahead. That I might rest in the day of trouble. He said, look, I'm going to be dead when this happens. That's how rough it's going to be. Go ahead and read. What is it? When he cometh up unto the people. When he cometh up unto the people. He will invade them with his troops. He will invade them with his troops. When Jesus comes, that's what it's going to be, sisters and brothers. An all-out invasion of the yes. earth. That's why I said in Jeremiah, the 25th chapter, that the slaying of the Lord is going to be from one end of the earth to the other. We just read in Isaiah. He said the slaying of the Lord is going to be many. In the 110th chapter of Psalms, he's going to fill the places with dead bodies. How come ain't nobody teaching this, sister and brother? Because this is going to surely happen. Now let's look at this invasion. Let's go into Revelation, the 19th chapter. That's why when Habakkuk saw that, he said, Lord, let me be dead when this happened. Well, I don't want to be dead. I want to see it. Revelation chapter 19. Nobody ever thought about the coming of Jesus as an invasion, did they? No. But this is what it's going to be. You're going to come up on this earth, sisters and brothers, and there's going to be some weeping and gnashing of teeth. There's going to be running for rocks to fall on them and everything else. Because Jesus is a dangerous person. Yes. We're going to start at verse 11. Revelation 19 and verse 11. And we're going to look at all, and, 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 and each time it's talking about his coming to tell you about all this killing he's going to do. Go ahead and read it. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. Uh -huh. And in righteousness, he doeth judge and make war. See, he came the first time, he came on an, on an ass, didn't he? He come in peace. But now he done changed his ride. He come on a white horse, and it said, and he makes war. That's what he come. Because this is an invasion. Go ahead and read. His eyes were as a flame of fire. Uh -huh. And on his head were many crowns. Go ahead. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Go ahead. And he was clothed with a vest of dipped in blood. What, is, his, what did his blood come from? Men. Go ahead and read. And his name is called the Word of God. Go ahead. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Uh -huh. And out of his mouth go up a sharp sword. That with it, he shall smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he tread up the wine press of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. So it's, that's why his vest is dipped in blood. It's red with the blood of people, sister and brother. Isaiah, the 63rd chapter, will tell you. He said that he stained his raiment with the blood. After he had been treading down Esau and the other nation. Yes. And the whole world. But go ahead and read. What verse? We have verse 16. Go ahead. Because in the armies, these are angel sisters, brother. A brother, boy, you mean the sword going to come out of his mouth and kill him? No. The sword means he's going to say, kill them all. His word. Did the book tell you the, the, the sword of the spirit is the word of God? Correct. He's going to tell them angels, kill them all. And he's going to tell you, if you're in your first resurrection, kill them all. That's all the ones that he has set to be killed. Yes. Go ahead and read. What verse? We are at verse 16. Uh-huh. And he have on his vest and on his thigh name written, uh -huh. King of kings and Lord of lords. Go ahead. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven. Now these are all the buzzards and the vultures and the meat-eating fowls. He called him, and what did he say to him? Go ahead. Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. Look, he called this the supper of the great God. What's going to be on the menu? Go ahead and read. That ye may eat the flesh of kings. The flesh of kings. And the flesh of captains. The flesh of captains. And the flesh of mighty men. Clap the fighter men. And the flesh of horses. Uh-huh. And of them that sit on them. Go ahead. And the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. So he's not offering you to a steak dinner. No, sir. He's offering you to kill all, eat up all these bodies. There's going to be too many to bury. This is going to happen, sisters and brothers. Go ahead and read. And I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth uh -huh. and their armies 
gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. See, this man is going to really prepare the fight against Jesus and the angels and all the people in the first resurrection. Boy, you're talking about a losing venture. They have to be crazy. Somebody going to tell them the Martians are coming. Who's going to tell them to beat the beast, the one that's going to be head, the man that's going to be running the European Union, and the false prophet? These guys are so corrupt. These guys, and they know better that the Lord didn't even bother to save them to judgment day. What's going to happen to them? Go ahead and read. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him. Now, that's the one that's going to call fire to come down to heaven. The false prophet, they call him Pope. He's the one they're going to make a statue that's going to make a statue that they're going to make. They ain't talking computer, a computer. They tell me he's going to make a literal statue. Might look like the picture that I got on, the, on my cover. He's going to make that statue walk and talk. And that's going to cause a whole lot of people to receive the mark that's called the mark of the beast. And you receive that mark, you're in trouble when the Lord comes. Go ahead and read. With which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. And what did he do to them? And them that worshiped his image. Uh -huh. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. So the lake of fire is not in existence now, sisters and brothers. But when the Lord's on his way down, he's going to create it. And we're going to show you where it's going to be. It ain't way down in the ground where Satan is barbecuing some people. How is that the Lord going to give a, a rebellious angel a domain to punish somebody. It was created to punish him and his angels. It's just, man, some men are going to end up in it. So he took them and he cast them alive into the lake of fire burning with rimstone. What did he do with the rest of them? And the remnant was slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse. Go ahead. Which sword proceeded out of his mouth and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. And other scripture let you know he's going to have beasts there eating too. Everybody going to get filled of man flesh. You're going to have the vultures and the, and the buzzards, and you're going to have the lions, and you're going to have the tigers, and the high, everything that eat meat every, is going to be there because the Lord is going to kill so many people. That's why I say he's going to fill the places with dead bodies, sister and brother. Yes. This is going to happen. You get up, oh, I don't believe that stuff. You don't have to believe it. Keep living. Now let's go. In the Isaiah, and back to Isaiah, the 66th chapter, and we're going to still pursue this thing. Isaiah 66. Because, sisters and brothers, people need to know about this, but they don't want to hear about it. Oh, you know, went over there and, and joined yourself in a cult. Sure, you're in a cult. You're in a Bible reading cult. What's your cult read? At least we're doing what Jesus did. Didn't it say when Jesus went into the synagogue and they gave him a book and he stood up to read? That is correct. Well, if you Christ-like and you're a Christian, then why don't you do like Christ? Why don't you read some book? But you don't have to. It's going to happen. It's going to happen no matter what. You know, whether you believe it or not, the day still comes and the night, and, and the night comes. I don't believe it's dark. I don't believe no dark. That's all right. Whether you believe it or not, it's going to show up. This is going to show up. Isaiah 66. Because remember, Jesus was commissioned to do this, wasn't he? Yes. He was commissioned to come and build the first places, release the prisoners. He was commissioned. This is all Jesus' job, sister and brother. The Father just sitting in heaven giving the orders. 66, and we're going to start at verse 16. 66 and 16. Okay, go ahead. For by fire and by sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. That's where we left off at, wasn't it? Yes. By fire and by sword, and we know that's talking about Jesus, didn't we? Yes. We read it in 2 Thessalonians, the first chapter. By fire and by sword shall the Lord plead with all flesh. Go ahead and read. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. They are also slain of the Lord again. And the slain of the Lord going to be many because he's going to fill the place with dead bodies. Go ahead and read. They that sanctify themselves uh -huh. and purify themselves. They with, that sanctify themselves 
and purify themselves, not sanctified by God, uh -uh. sister and brother, by his word, themselves and purify themselves. Go ahead and read. In the gardens behind one tree in the midst. That, God, that's, that tree is still in the garden, sister and brother, Satan the devil. He just ain't in the garden of Eden, but he's still among us. How do you know who's following him? Go ahead and read. Eating swine's flesh. Uh-huh. And the abomination. Go ahead. And the mouse. So be consumed together, saith the Lord. Of course, I'm going to consume them too. I hate to say that. But what verse are we? We are now at verse 18. Go ahead. For I know their works and their thoughts. It shall come that I will gather all nations in tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. So when I come back, I'm going to bring them all, and they're going to come and see my glory. I'm going to bring them all when they bring Israel back and when I'm back on earth. Go ahead and read. And I will set a sign among them. Go ahead. And I will send those that escape of them unto the nations. Go ahead. To Tarshish, Paul, and Lud, that draw, to, that draw the bow to Tubal and Javan. Go ahead. To the isles of Falls that have not heard my fame, neither have seen my glory. Now, and, go ahead. And they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. So when I come back, I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm to send some people and tell them, look here, the Lord is black. And what's the Gentiles going to do? So they, everybody's going to see the Lord coming, but they ain't going to know it. You know why? Because they don't know what they're looking at. But Revelation said, the Lord, my God should come, and every eye going to see him. But if you don't know what you're looking at, you just see, boy, I, I look here, I, I guess I must have saw a falling star, a whole lot of falling stars. But what's going to happen when you go, when they come up? Go ahead and read. And they shall bring all your brethren for an offering unto the Lord, out of all nations up upon horses. That's going to be something. You get an Israelite to thank you something else, and they're going to say, look, we're going to take you back to Jerusalem because the Lord is, I ain't, I ain't on you. That's all right. Come on anyway. Because the Lord is not going to leave one Israelite no place when he come back. So he's going to bring you up in litters and everything else. Go ahead and read. And in chariots and in litters and upon mules and upon swift beasts, to my holy mountain, Jerusalem, uh -huh. say of the Lord, as the children of Israel bring an offering and a clean vessel into the house of the Lord. They're going to bring you as an offering because they're going to be looking for some uh, mercy from God because they know what they've done to you. You understand? Like you slapping around a, a, a little old boy, then his, you know, about two, uh, about two, three feet tall, and then his brother show up, six foot nine, muscles even in his fingernail. What you gonna do? You gonna plead? Oh, you gonna, you gonna brush his little brother off? Oh, you know, you must have failed and, I, and I'm picking you up. That's the way it's gonna be. Yes. That's why I say in that day, 10 men should take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew and say, we will go with you because we have heard that the Lord is with you. Because the Lord is gonna take down this earth and he gonna take it down ugly. And when we, and when the nations go up, I'm going to show you what the Lord said they're going to have to do. Skip now to verse 23 and go ahead. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, uh -huh. shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. Everybody going to have to go up to Jerusalem at one time or another. Go ahead and read. And they shall go forth. And look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. And they're going to go forth and look up on the carcasses. These are the bodies, and they're still living, of the men that have transgressed against me. Go ahead and read. For their worms shall not die. That means the flesh worm. Don't you know when you die, don't you know flesh worm eats your body up? Y'all know that? They put you in a nice vault and everything else. Them worms must be inside of you. You can't escape them. Where the flesh worms are going not, will not die, go ahead and read. Neither shall that fire be quenched. And their fire not going to be quenched. And they shall be in abhorring unto all flesh. So you're going to look at these two guys. Who? The beast and the false prophet. They're going to go before Satan. They're going to burn and be eaten on for a thousand years before Satan get to the grave, to the lake of fire, sisters and brothers. So when you come up to Jerusalem, he going to tell you, go over and look upon the carcasses of those guys that have sinned against me. Now, when you read that, don't that tell you where the lake of fire going to be? In Jerusalem. Not there now. 
because it don't come in existence until the Lord comes, sisters and brothers. So ain't no great mystery here. None whatsoever. You're going to be right there in Jerusalem. Where's the lake of fire now? It's not in existence. Well, when is it going to come in existence? When the Lord bring it into existence. When is that? When he comes. So now let's go to Micah, the fourth chapter. We got two more places after this. Micah chapter four. Because this is some interesting stuff, sisters and brothers. Because oh, people have misjudged Jesus. He's sitting up in there thinking you can do anything and you're going to get away with it. Boy, you are so uninformed. It is not going to happen. The Lord is going to do a job on this earth. And the only way, and the only way you're going to get by it, like I said in the 91st chapter of Psalm, the Lord is going to be your shield and buckler, his word. If you're walking in his word and doing what he said, then you get to escape. But if you ain't doing what he said, this drama that we're reading about, it's going to fall on you too. Micah chapter 4, and we're going to start at verse 1. Micah 4 and verse 1. Go ahead and read it. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains. Go ahead. And it shall be exalted above the hills. Now this government is going to be in the top of the government. And this city is going to be a, a, a bigger, a, a be ahead of all the rest of the cities on this earth. Go ahead and read. And people shall flow unto it. Uh-huh. And many nations shall come and say, come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. Go ahead. And to the house of the God of Jacob. Go ahead. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. Uh-huh. For the law shall go forth of Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. That's where it's always gone forth, sisters and brothers, not from Rome. What you call Christianity and the word of God came from Rome. And you know, I want to know the ugly part of it. They did it. It didn't originate it there. The Gentiles copied off the Hamites. I hear people probably, well, you know, Jesus and, and Mary is black. Uh, uh, uh. And see, they got it all over Eastern Europe and sometimes Central and South America. The West painted them white. I say, yeah, Mary and Jesus was black. But that picture you see ain't talking about them. That's talking about Nimrod's son, white, Semiramis, and his son, Tamar's. But you don't read nothing. You don't pay no attention, so you don't know any of that. So now, when the Lord comes, sisters and brothers, the nation's going to flow to Jerusalem. They're going there to find out what thus said the Lord. If they knew what God was talking about, if they was teaching right, then why are you going up to Jerusalem to get taught? That means what you got is wrong. Go ahead and read. Verse 3, and he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations of falls. Uh -huh. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares Go ahead. and their spears into pruning hooks. Go ahead. Nations shall not lift up a sword against nations. Uh -huh. Neither shall they learn war anymore. They ain't going to want a war no more once Jesus gets through with them. You understand? This war that man had with man ain't nothing but a field day. That's right. Jesus is going to kill you, and he's going to kill all kind of ways. We ain't going to read it all, but you get a place where you say you're going to be standing up and your flesh is going to fall away from your body. Your eyes just going to consume away in, your eye, in, your, in the socket and your tongue going to consume away in your mouth. I can't even imagine a death like that. The Lord know how to kill. I guess he knew how to create. So he's going to uncreate you. Skip down to verse 6. Verse 6 and go ahead. In that day, say of the Lord, Will I assemble her that, that halteth, and I will gather her that is driven out, uh -huh. and her that I have afflicted. That's that woman that he's talking about. Remember? So he's going to give him up until it's time uh, for her to bring forth, the woman that's travailed. Then he's going to bring them all back. And that day said the Lord, I will assemble her that is halted. That's crippled. We've been crippled by everybody. And I will gather her that is driven out, because he drove us into all the nations of the earth. And her that is afflicted, and we have been afflicted by everybody on this planet. Nobody's innocent. Go ahead and read. And I will make her that halt of a remnant, uh -huh. and her that was cast 
far off a strong nation. Go ahead. And the Lord shall reign over them in Mount Zion from henceforth even forever. Where is Mount Zion? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. The Lord going to reign over them. He ain't taking you to heaven. That come from Gentile, which he got from Satan. And Paul warned the Gentile about Satan. And he said that you sacrifice the devil. Going to heaven, that's from Satan. But the Lord is going to deliver us, which, is, which are afflicted, and we still afflicted. We just ain't got sense enough to know it. Go ahead and read. Verse 8, and thou, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, Go ahead. unto thee shall it come, even the first dominion. The kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. And that's what Jesus is going to set up right there, boom, on earth. And from now in Jerusalem, on David's throne, he's going to say what Zechariah said, he going to have dominion from sea to sea, from the river, which is the river Jordan, even to the end of the earth. There's not going to be a place on this earth that Jesus is not going to be ruling, sisters and brothers. Not a place. And while he's ruling, he's going to be deciding who's going to be where. And he's going to teach him. Let's go into Matthew, the 25th chapter. Matthew chapter 25. Nobody reads the book, sisters and brothers. Therefore, the world is steeped in paganism. You don't have a clue of what's going on. It's all about money now. And they ain't got sense enough to know that money can't save you. I do not like being 81. I do not deal, like dealing with the pains that come being with 81. And I know tomorrow I'm going to be another day older. November I'm going to be 82. If I had money, I would reverse and take me back to 30. If money could work. Don't work. So if something can't save you, can't stop you from getting old, and can't take away pains that come with old age, then why are you so hung up on it? 25 and 31. 25 and 31. Okay, go ahead. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. That throne of his glory is David, ain't it? Yes. David's throne. That's what the angels say he's going to sit. Go ahead. And before him shall be gathered all nations, uh -huh. and he shall separate them one from another, Go ahead. as a shepherd divide of his sheep from the goats. That's going to be going on all during the thousand-year millennium period, the thousand years that Jesus is going to be ruling on this earth. Go ahead and read. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, uh -huh. but the goats on the left. Go ahead. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye bless of my father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. So come. You bless him, my father, and inherit the kingdom, which is the father's kingdom, prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Everybody's trying to get to the father's kingdom. You, got, you better survive Jesus' kingdom, or you, you ain't going to be in no shape to enjoy the father's kingdom when it come down from heaven. Did nobody go and read that? But what are they going to say about the people that don't do right? Skip down to verse 41 and read it. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand. To them on the left hand, go ahead. Depart from me, uh -huh. ye curse, into everlasting fire. Into Pre everlasting fire, go ahead. Prepare for the devil and his angels. Prepare for the devil and his angels. That fire was prepared, the leg of fire was prepared to punish Satan and his angels. Not to give Satan a domain so he can go and punish other people. But then men going to end up in it. And when the Lord come back, there's something else he's going to do, too. This is the last place. Let's go into Zephaniah, Zephaniah, the third chapter. Zephaniah, chapter three. But don't, don't nobody have time to learn this, sisters and brothers. But I'm going to tell you something. The day going to come when you're going to wish you had. Worst time to figure out that you don't want to commit suicide is after you didn't jumped off the building. <laughs> you kind of late now, partner. You better make that decision before you jump. Zephaniah chapter 3. Zephaniah chapter 3. The 
because the Lord's given you plenty of time. You got your whole life to save your life. Think about it. Because they tell you in Ecclesiastes, the ninth chapter, as long as you are living, there is hope. You have the whole life to save your life. Zephaniah 3, and we're going to start reading at verse 8. So the Lord telling you, wait on it. Just wait for me. Because all this stuff we done read is going to happen. All you got to do is be patient and wait. And the Lord telling you that. Verse 8, 3 and 8. Go ahead. Therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, uh -huh. until the day that I raise up to the prey. Until the day that I raise up to the prey. That's what he, that's what he called these nations that he's going to take down. He called them prey. Just like a deer is a prey to the lion, ain't it? Right. Until I raise up to the prey. Go ahead and read. Until the day that I rise up to the prey. Uh -huh. For my determination is to gather the nations. And do what? That I may assemble the kingdoms. And do what? To pour upon their mind indignation. He said, I'm determined to do that. I'm going to gather all nations and kingdoms, and I'm going to bring them, and I'm going to pour upon their mind indignation. In other words, I'm going to kill them like flies. Go ahead and read. Even all my fierce anger, uh -huh. for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. Uh -huh. For then will I turn to the people a pure language, that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. He said, look, I'm going to pour upon them the fierce of my anger and divide him with the fire of my jealousy. Then I'm going to turn the people a pure language. That means there's a language, if it's pure, that means it's never been spoken before. That excludes Hebrew. He's going to, not just the people, he's talking about the whole nation. He said the people, not just Israel, that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. So you ain't going to worry about losing something in, in interpretation or translation. Everybody's going to speak the same language. That's another thing. People, where the Jews are back? Can you speak Hebrew? No. Well, then they ain't back. Everybody, all the sons of Adam are going to speak one language, just like it was before the Tower of Babel. It said the whole earth was of one language. When the Lord come back, he's going to reverse it and put that one language back on the earth. Whatever it is, it's going to be pure. It have never been spoken before. But go ahead and read. Verse 10. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliance, even the daughter of my disperse, shall bring mine offering. Lord picked a nation that ain't no other people that call themselves that but black folks. Ethiopians. To let you know that whoever the Ethiopians are, he told us we're going to be like the Ethiopians. Yes. That's from there and all over that we're going to come and we're going to do his offering. Go ahead and skip down to verse 14 now. Verse 14 and go ahead. Sing, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all the heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. Go ahead. Lord, have taken away thy judgment. Uh -huh. He hath cast out thine enemy. Go ahead. The king of Israel, even the Lord, is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil anymore. Boy, that is really something, man. He going to... Reverse the judgment he brought upon us. He is going to cast out our enemies. Esau and Ishmael ain't going to be in our land over there. That's what they're fighting over. They're fighting over your land. You didn't know that? you taking sides. Like I said years ago when I saw this guy, Warner Saunders, supposed to be, you know, was on a newscaster. He had an Edomite, a so-called Jew, and an Ishmaelite, an Arab, sitting before him. And he tell them, trying to broker them to make peace with one another. I said, show you how uninformed this guy is. It's just like you, two guys, throwing me out of my house, and they fighting over my house, and I'm going to come up to the windows and I'm going to show you all how to live in my house in peace. <laughs> that is absolute ignorance, sisters and brothers. But the Lord said he's going to reverse all that. What verse was that? We skip it down to verse 20. Skip down to verse 20. Verse 20 and go ahead. At that time will I bring you again, even in the time that I gathered you. For I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth. When I turn back your captivity before your eyes, saith the Lord. Lord, so I'm going to make all earth praise you, Israel, when I turn back your captivity. 
But think about it, brother and sister. Are you prepared for that day when the Lord says you're going to fill all the places with dead bodies? If you're not prepared, you better get to work. Thank you for your time.